Um, my name is Heidi Dillon Otto. I've, um, I'm the portfolio director for our non alk practice um, at DV. My background is actually primarily in the organic and natural food space. I've been a brand marketing leader, innovation leader for about the last 20 years and, re and about a year ago joined DV to lead our non-alcoholic practice. So I'm coming from kind of the uh, wellness, natural, organic space and as we look at that, how does that come together with spirits um, and the hospitality industry. So DV, just a quick um, background for you. So we are the world's first accelerator on the drinks side of things. So, you know, we got a lot of inspiration. 2013 was when we started in London, but a lot of inspiration from the tech industry, a lot of acceleration programs and venture coming in that space, but nothing in our industry. So we had the idea to put together the world's first drinks accelerator. So we're founder led. Um, we have investments around the world. To date, we've invested about um, 60, 60 million pounds and about 25% of our portfolio is in non-ALK. Um, from an acceleration perspective, we offer four things. Uh, we partner with Diageo on the investment side. Uh, we have expertise in partnering just as far as our group, our acceleration process um, that we lead um, all of our entrepreneurs through. It's very bespoke. People are coming at all different stages of their business, so we really design and customize our program towards them. Given that we're global, we do have a network around the world that we also connect people into, so that's a big piece. And then we also have a partnership with Redwood Brands, which helps navigate the three-tier system on uh, the distribution side. Like I mentioned, we're founder-led, so today we're going to hear from three different founders. Um, not all of them are in our portfolio. We have a range with the group today, but really interesting stories that you're going to hear. And I think we all know working in the spirits industry, how important it is to really have those authentic founder led stories. And at DV, we believe really strongly in that, that it comes from an authentic place and that the people behind it um, really lead everything we're doing. So we, how many people know about our white paper that just came out about a month ago? A few of you. So if you haven't had a chance to read it, distillventures.com, it's on there. But this is a study that we've done. So 2017, we did our first publication of it. And at that point, we just had a lot of insights and intuition around what was happening in non-ALK. 2019, now we came out. And actually, this was data-driven. So starting last year, we set out on a study. Um, we worked with 150 venues between New York and LA to actually look at data of what was happening on menus, what bartenders were thinking, what the industry was saying, and what was actually happening. So that white paper just released and it's public so you can go ahead and download it. Um, a couple of highlights that we found in the study, um, you know, like I mentioned, we were looking at um, the consumer side of things, industry side of things, a couple of key stats, you know, every, I mean, I think everyone knows that there's a big movement around choice. And when you're looking at menus and what people are coming in to ask for, it's not necessarily about I've stopped drinking or I'm changing. It's just that people want a choice, no matter what day of the week it is, what they're looking for, and they don't want to have to compromise to have something that's not as good as all these beautiful cocktails that we're often drinking. So that came out resounding in the study that it was all about choice, and that's what consumers and the industry was really saying. Um, the other piece that was interesting is that, you know, 58% 58, 58 of consumers are drinking more no or low ABV drinks than a year ago. So a lot of big changes in just consumer behavior too. You know, we see, as I mentioned, you know, when we did our first study, it was a lot about, you know, wellness was one reason that we found people were drinking more non-alcoholic drinks, but also just looking for meaningful experiences. And, you know, we're a very experience-driven economy now. We don't necessarily pay, well... Some people definitely pay for all the new Teslas and amazing things out there, but often we're paying for experiences and that's, it's very much about that. And also this big driver of curiosity and flavor, you know, all of the amazing connectivity we have now to try new things everywhere we go. And this experience of everything is on our phones. We're all seeing what we're doing, what we're eating, what we're drinking. And so all of that connectivity. But now what we have is the data to really back up that it's really about choice. And that's what kept um, coming out through our study. Um, a couple stats, I have, there's so many stats in here, but I think a couple that I want to highlight is that we, you know, in LA, one of our studies, so the 83% of everyone we talked to from a bar and bar manager side, that they, if they didn't have a non-ALK menu, they knew they needed to have one in the next six months because it was so many people are coming in and asking for it. 
Actually, I'm going to go to this and then come back to this. Here's a couple other really important stats. In LA, we found that 40% of um, bar and restaurant menus had a dedicated non-alc section, and a third in New York. New York, you tend to see a little bit more when it's paired with food, so more on the restaurant side than cocktail bar side, but definitely growing, for sure. Um, and then another really interesting fact was that 59% of consumers when they're ordering drinks, it's not that they have stopped, that they might not be ordering a spirited drink, but they're alternating throughout the night. So there's a lot of, you know, it's, it's just kind of mixed up every way you look at it. So really interesting that people are not necessarily just drinking only spirits the whole night or a drink with alcohol in it. It's very mixed on what they do. I just kind of want to level set the way we look at what a non-alcoholic drink is composed of. So there's three areas. One is the occasion. So where might you have a spirit, a drink, or a cocktail, and what, what is that environment like you're having it and being able to have an equivalent choice that is just as beautifully made, just as handcrafted, and has that similar expression, so the same way in which an alcoholic drink is being consumed. The second one is that the flavor profiles are staying more in line with um, the same way you would build a cocktail. So very sophisticated, same type of mouthfeel, length, has all the complexity, you know, it's not just this overly sweet mocktail that you know we've been hearing about for the past 10 years is very very different now and then the third area is the way that it's served so it's not just you know a Shirley Temple on ice and a 16 ounce pint glass it's beautiful in a cocktail in a cocktail glass and served very similar to the same way you would see a spirited expression so as we talk you can just kind of keep that in the in your mind as the three things that we use for our criteria